what's up it's Kyle here from Noob Gains and today I'm talking to you about how to lose one pound of body fat and I had someone ask me this recently and I know that there's a lot of information already out on the internet talking about uh, you know it has to do with how much fat goes into one pound and there's that 3500 calories sort of thing floating around and I wanted to point out that Equating 3,500 calories to a one pound body fat loss is not always the right thing to think of. Um, if you notice a little black thing going in and out of the video, it's because I got my buddy Vader here on my lap. That's, <laughs> that's Vader, everybody. Uh, he's a little restless right now, so he's sitting on my lap for this video. But anyway, so out on the internet, people constantly say, you know, in order to lose a pound of body fat, all you gotta do is cut 3,500 calories from your weekly calories. So when you think about that, that's why you divide 3,500 up divided by seven, you have 500 calories. There's, that's a common deficit that most people say in order to lose up to one pound a week. Um, and I kinda have a little bit of argument on that. So first of all, what's wrong with that statement? The first thing that's wrong with that statement is that it doesn't take into account how many calories you are consuming right now. And I don't mean a, an absolute number like 1,700 or 2,000 or 2,500 or something like that, but I mean how many calories you're consuming in association with your maintenance calories. I may have mentioned maintenance calories before, but maintenance calories are simply the number of calories that you need in order, in order to maintain your current body weight uh, right now. So, and this is something that you really should uh, calculate and find out for yourself. What's the easiest way to do it? The easiest way to calculate your maintenance calories is to have a tool to do it for you. So, for example, smartphone calorie counting apps like MyFitnessPal or uh, Calorie Counter is another one. You go in there, you type in your age, your height, your current weight, your activity level, things like that, and it'll blow out a number. It'll ask you, like, do you want to lose weight? Are you trying to gain weight? Are you trying to maintain weight? And if you say maintain weight, it's gonna throw out a number. Um, another really easy way to calculate it, but it's not as accurate, is to simply take your current body weight, uh, multiply that, in pounds, your current body weight in pounds, and multiply that by 10. That'll get you a very rough estimation of what your resting metabolic rate is. So for example, somebody who's 180 pounds, multiply that by 10, 1800 calories. There you go. Um, so it has to do with your maintenance calories. That's the first thing that, that, talk, that relates to um, how much of a deficit you should actually be creating to lose a pound of body fat. And it also has to do with how much you're eating right now in association with those maintenance calories. So really how much should you uh, be eating to lose that pound of body fat? So everyone says just immediately create a 500 calorie deficit. Well, the reason you don't wanna do that is a couple of things. So first of all, you want to make your calorie deficit as small as possible um, in as small, I say, as small as, as possible in order to still see uh, fat loss results or body weight results. Okay, if you automatically create a deficit of 500 calories, the reason they say that is because it will almost guarantee that you're going to begin losing body weight immediately. So unless you're in a very extreme calorie surplus, so you're eating so much every single week and increasing that amount every single week to the point that you're constantly gaining weight, a 500 calorie deficit is automatically gonna make you lose some weight. Um, but the reason you wanna keep them smaller is for a couple things. First of all, a smaller calorie deficit is much easier to get used to. Now, in theory, cutting your calories in order to lose weight, lose body fat, in, it sounds easy and straightforward, but in reality, it is an extreme mental challenge that you will go through. Just think about all the times that you have passed food in your house that someone has sat out 
in a dish or something. Like my wife, she loves to just keep the donuts and pie right on the counter for everyone to see. And I think every time I walk by that, I just want to take like a spoon and just carve out a little tiny chunk and just have a spoonful. Just a spoonful won't do anything to my diet. If I do that two to three times a day, it's going to add up to a full piece of pie. And then I'm ruining my deficit. So that's the reason, okay, that kind of got sidetracked there. But that's a reason why smaller calorie deficits are are easier to manage because they're not as much of a mental challenge to keep cutting that amount of calories out of your daily caloric intake every single day. So that's the first reason. So think of, you know, if you had to cut 200 calories versus 500 calories, it's easier to cut that 200 instead of the 500. The second reason why it's important to keep the deficits low is because a smaller deficit allows for adjustments later. And what I mean by adjustments later is when you first go on a diet and you begin cutting out calories in order to lower your body weight, you can't just cut it one time and expect the body weight to keep falling forever. That's not how it works, unfortunately. You'll cut it one time, you'll start to see uh, some good drop in weight probably for from two to four, maybe even six weeks. I've, I've actually seen it up to six weeks that I have lost uh, weight because I cut my calories. Now after six weeks, it's gonna stagnate. It's gonna stay at the same level. And the only way to continue that is you have to cut more. Now, if you started with a 500 calorie deficit, and then the next time you think, okay, I'm gonna do another 500 or another 300 or 200 or whatever it is, that's, it's gonna suck. It's gonna suck more than if you started with like 200, then it started to stagnate after a while and then you dropped it by like another 100 later. Then you've only dropped your total calories by like 300 calories where in the other scenario you're dropping it by like 700. So that's another reason why smaller deficits are better at the very beginning. Then, kind of a hinted there, but the reason you don't want to immediately jump into a 500 calorie deficit is because how much you're eating in relation to your maintenance calories, you could be right on the edge of already uh, losing weight. And what I mean by this is, what if you find out that your maintenance calories are like 1900 calories? And after you take some time and actually track what you've been eating, you find out that on average, you're eating 2000 calories. Now, in order for you to see any weight loss, all you have to do is maybe drop by like 200 or 300 calories right there. And if you jump right into 500, then you're possibly cutting out calories that at this point in your weight loss stage is unnecessary. So you are unnecessarily removing food from your diet that you could be eating and still seeing results. That's the point I'm trying to make. That's probably the biggest point I'm trying to make as a reason for not just automatically cutting 500 calories from your daily caloric intake. Now, set aside all of that. We're talking about body weight versus body fat and how to lose that. So people say that, you know, a pound of fat is 3,500 calories, so if you start just cutting out 3,500 calories, you're gonna lose body fat, but that is not true. That equates to body weight. The only way that you can um, maximize the amount of fat loss in uh, relation to, um, I guess you could say muscle or just water weight is you have to work on maintaining your muscle. You have to do all the things that are necessary to keep the muscle in your body. And what are those things? Number one, training. You gotta train your muscles. You gotta keep up some conditioning. You gotta do strength training. You gotta use your muscles in a way that says, I wanna keep it, I need it for a reason. Tell your body you need your muscle. And that's why I commonly say, for you noobs, you should be on your novice training program. That's how you keep your muscle. Second thing, you got to be eating enough protein. You got to tell your body that, you know, during that period, you actually will be losing a little bit of muscle. But if you keep up the protein 
it'll it'll maintain the mass that you currently have even when a little bit is being lost bit by bit week after week the protein will keep regenerating it and that's what you want and you got to make sure you're eating all enough carbs filling those in at the end I had a post about carbs I did recently maybe I'll link that in the description but if you're eating enough carbs then you're going to perform well enough during your sessions in order to promote more growth in order to keep that muscle so what you really need to do when you're setting up your calorie plan you need to not automatically just slap a blatant number of calories that you're going to cut from your diet in order to create a deficit that will cause you to lose weight you need to first think about your maintenance calories calculate those get a smartphone app or just use that simple equation and then test it out over a couple of weeks tracking your calories to see if you actually maintain that body weight then after that point decide okay now I'm gonna start cutting calories I know how much my body needs to maintain right now maybe you'll find out it's only like a couple hundred calories in order to tip you over the edge and start losing weight and that's that's good enough right and then in order to make sure you're losing body fat in, instead of anything else you want to make sure you're still training you're still eating all your protein you got enough carbs in there that you're got good performance in the gym so that's what it's all about thanks for watching this video thanks for listening to the podcast if that's what you're doing there so uh, if you're watching on YouTube hit that like button for me subscribe if you uh, like the information that you just saw if you're listening to the podcast this is hosted on SoundCloud uh, you can go to soundcloud.com slash noobgains to listen more you can also go to uh, iTunes noobgains.com slash iTunes and leave me a review that would also help me out so until next time keep making gains noobs talk to you later